If you would turn to Genesis 22, Genesis 22, I'm excited about that. So our uh, youth have had an amazing time at Winter Renewal. Um, that's uh, put on by North Georgia, uh, their CE department. I'm so excited about what they have uh, experienced up there. I FaceTimed them right before service, and I was just, you know, telling them that I'm, uh, I'm proud of them. I just uh, am, uh, am so excited for them, and they're on their way back right now. Uh, so uh, so uh, pray for traveling mercies for them, and so I'm, uh, I'm very excited that they are uh, coming home, but they're not just coming home the same. They're coming home on fire. And, uh, and that is such a cool thing. So y'all get ready because not only did we just have revival, we also had, we also have youth revival coming. And so this church is about to go places. And so I'm excited about that. So Genesis chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22, if you would stand for the reading of God's word, we will start in verse one, Genesis chapter 22, starting in in verse one, it says, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and he said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said, now take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God told him. Then on the third day, everyone say the third day. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, the lad, and I will go yonder and worship. I love Abraham here because we know he's Southern because he said, I'm going yonder, right? Isn't that cool? All right, so uh, we're, I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Where do you go to church? I go yonder ways, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. Then he looked and said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Now, we know the story. We know that they came up on the mountain. They, uh, they, uh, he was about to sacrifice his son. He had his knife up just like this. And God said, Abraham, don't touch the boy. He looks over and he's got a ram in the bush. And so that is the story, and God provided himself a lamb. God provided himself a ram in the bush for Abraham, and that is amazing. But what I want, uh, that is an amazing story, but what I want to focus on is this. Number, uh, verse number two, then, then he said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went. And he arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Today, I want to talk to you on the subject of the pause. Subject of the pause. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come here. We thank you for the opportunity to worship your name, worship our Jesus freely. And Lord, I pray that this message will go forth, not that it will be my words, not that it will be, you know, anything of me, but Lord, that you will completely take over and Lord, your words will go forward. And we know that your word will not return void. Lord, we thank you for the revival that our youth have had. We thank, for, thank you for what you are doing in this church. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue it. And Lord, that we will go forth with fire and with zeal and with power from the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, now I pray that all hearts, minds, ears, and souls be open to what you would have us to hear, what you would have us to do today. In the precious name of Jesus, the whole church said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Uh, 
I want to talk to you on the pause. Abraham and Sarah had prayed for this child, had prayed for this child. And Sarah was 90 years old when she had Isaac. 90 years old when she had Isaac. I thought I was getting old when we had Isaiah and I was 30, right? I was like, I'm old. How am I going to have a kid, right? But she had I, uh, she had Isaac, I was about to say he, she had Isaiah, but that's not right. She had Isaac at 90 years old. Abraham was the cradle robber and was at 100 years old, 10 years older than Sarah. And they had Isaac. But see, there's a lesson to be learned there, church. There's a lesson to be learned there. It doesn't matter how old you are, how far you've gone, it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. You've been praying for it. You've been hoping for it. You've been wishing for it. It's still going to happen. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter how far you've, uh, you've wandered away, how much you've done, uh, what you've thought about doing. It's still going to happen. God has put it in your soul. God has put a dream in you, and you think that I've, I've lost it. I've, I've gone too far, but let me tell you, it's still going to happen. Now, that's a sidetrack. It's free. Don't worry about it. This is what we're really going to talk about. So God spoke one day and told Abraham to go sacrifice his son on a mountain that God would show him later. He didn't give him specific instructions here. Number one... Uh, here's, here's the things that he knew. Number one, I want you to sacrifice your son. Number two, it won't be here. And number three, it's going to be on a mountain. That's it. That's all Abraham knew. And, and there's a pause between verse two and verse three. I don't know what time God spoke to Abraham in that day. I don't know. We're not told that and we're also not told what Abraham said to his wife after that. Can you imagine that family meal? They all sit down and they go, and he goes, Well, uh, what you know, Sarah goes, Abraham, what'd you do today? Well, I was working in the field and uh, God spoke to me. Oh, awesome. You know, are we gonna have another kid? You know, <laughs> no. Um, actually, the kid that we have, he wants me to sacrifice him. <laughs> If I said that to Kirsty, she would go ahead and just have me committed, right? If I came to Kirsty and said, listen, the kid that we had, you know, the kid, right? You, you know the kid that we have, right? I need to sacrifice him. I'm going to take him on a mountain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him. But it's for God because God asked me to. I don't think it would get past Kirsty. I don't think that conversation would go very far, right? But see, here's the faith. Sarah had the faith and Abraham had the faith. And there's a pause. There's a pause there, but it's not long. Because you see, he rose early in the morning and saddled up his donkey. A lot can happen. A lot can happen in the pause. From God asking you to do something, to God calling you to do something, to you actually getting up and doing it, a lot can happen in that pause. Maybe, maybe doubt happens in that pause. Maybe, maybe God has called you to do something and you are in between actually doing it. Maybe God has said, here's what you're going to do or here's what I want you to do, and maybe you're in the pause. Between God calling you and you doing it, you're in the pause. You're in the break. Maybe doubt has set in. Maybe, maybe uh, doubt that, did God really ask me to do that? Did God really ask me to do that? I, I, I can't believe it. See, God can't ask me to preach, I stumble on words. Uh, God can't ask me to minister to kids. 
I don't like kids. God can't ask me to pastor. I'm an evangelist, right? God can't ask me to minister to women because I don't want to, right? There's so much that can happen. This doubt comes in your mind. God can't ask me to teach. I don't know anything. We reason in our minds that it couldn't really be God because we're not equipped for it. It it couldn't really be God. I'm too messed up. I've done too much. I am not holy enough to do that. I'm not holy enough to do that, God. God, you've got the wrong person. I think you picked up the wrong phone. You dialed the wrong number. Have you ever done that before? Picked up the call from God and said, oh, sorry, wrong number. (laughs) You know, picked up the phone, right, proverbially, you know, picked up the proverbial phone and God said, hey, I need you to go minister to this person. Oh, wrong number, you know, and and just left it, right? (laughs) Has anyone ever done that? Don't raise your hand because you know you have. Maybe fear has come in. Maybe fear has come in and it's taken hold of you. You know, fear comes in and and just takes control. It just comes in and just squeezes the life out of you and says, you can't do that. You can't speak in front of a crowd. You, you You can't pray with that person. I can't go love someone that I've already told this person I don't like. Fear comes in. Fear comes in and just says, you can't do that. You can't do that. You've been called to be be a teacher, but I can't speak in front of people. You've been called to to minister to, to, to the youth, but I can't minister to youth. I've got I've got too much junk. Right? Fear comes in. Finally, attacks. Finally, attacks come in. When the enemy will come at you with everything that he can, he's put the doubt in you. He's put the fear in your mind. Now he will work on your surroundings. Your spouse will be the most annoying person you've ever met because you've been called to work on marriages. I don't know if I'm quite looking forward to this relationship goal series because I kind of know what happens when you start talking about relationships and start teaching on relationships. Usually your household is not the best, right? You've never never ministered to to, uh, marriages if, if if you don't know what that's like. Uh, your, your, your pipes in your house will have a leak, right? I think y'all, you guys have experienced that. The pipes in your house will have a leak. You know, there's a tax that will come on all the time. You know, your, your brand new tire will, will be flat. Your, your boss will be annoying and things just come at you. It's all designed to stop you in the paws. It's all designed to stop you from the call to the response. It's all designed to stop you right there. Fear, your doubt, the attack. But listen to this. Don't let the assignment die in the pause. Don't let doubt take take place. Don't let fear take hold. And don't let the attack take over. Don't let the assignment die in the pause. So how do we protect against these things? Number one, say yes. Say yes. Don't give yourself the opportunity to let doubt come in. Say yes. I I was with a ministry this week that I describe as a yes ministry. I They're they're an aviation ministry, 
But, but then God put other stuff in their ministry, like, like affordable housing. And, and then, and then uh, now they're doing um, uh, this other thing, and then they're doing this, and they're, they're doing this, and then they're doing this, and then, uh, then they've got teen ministry, and then they've got this. And, and somehow it all works together, but it wouldn't work if they didn't say yes to it. God saw that they were faithful with one and that they were willing for more. God saw that they were faithful with one and willing for more. So when you're faithful and you say yes to God, he starts multiplying. And so they're willing. When God comes to them with an opportunity, when an opportunity comes up, they say yes. Now they have some guidelines. They do vet it a little bit, but they mostly say yes. They said, I, I, I looked at the, the, at the president and I said, I just see your ministry as a yes ministry. He said, yes. He said, our default is yes. Our default is yes. It was amazing. People say, people say that no will get you a Jesus whooping. You ever heard that? A Jesus whooping? You ever heard that? Maybe, maybe that's a Southern thing. You know, a Jesus whooping. A whooping. But spanking is kind of weird. So anyway, a Jesus whooping. You ever heard of that? Jesus whooping. Isn't it fun to say? Whooping. You can say it really Southern. Jesus whooping. Right? And they say that a Jesus whooping is, is the, the worst thing. But you know what I find worse than a Jesus whooping? Is saying no and seeing God do it anyway. Because I didn't get the opportunity to be involved. I let go of the opportunity to be involved in something great. God showed it to me. God gave it to me. I said no, and God still did it. Or saying no and seeing someone suffer because of it. Being at, the, at, the, at, the, at Walmart and seeing someone about to put stuff back and they have kids and put stuff back, their groceries, and God says, go pay for it. And you're like, well, Lord, it's 14 days before my payday. I can't afford that. And you don't do it. And they have to put back bread. And they have to put back milk. And they have to put back these things. And what they really walked out with was some crackers. You could have done it. You could have done it but you watch them walk out after God had told you to do something about it. God, well, there, it's in the pause that we lose, that we lose things. It's in the pause that we lose things. God told him, go sacrifice your son. That's a big ask. That's a big, big thing to ask. But he got up the next day and made preparations for it. He made preparations for it. Has God ever asked you to sacrifice one of your children? No. I know that because yours are here and alive, right? I saw yours on Facebook not too long ago, right? And yours are heading back from winter renewal. I hope they didn't sacrifice them. That wasn't part of the assignment. <laughs> we'll see. We'll count them when they get back. But that's a big request. But he didn't pause. He didn't pause. Number two, thank God for the opportunity. He chose you. He chose you. He looked down 
at 7.7 billion people on the earth and chose you to do it? Why you? Why you? It doesn't matter why he asked you, but he asked you. Thank God for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for asking me to buy their dinner. Anybody else in this restaurant could buy their dinner, but you asked me to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because you know something that I don't know. I see $47 in my bank account, and I see their bill is 34. I see that I'm not going to have much left till payday, but you see something coming. He sees the check in the mail. He sees the extra bonus at work. He sees something that you don't see. He sees something that you don't see. And, and I don't know who this is for, but God gave me this this morning when I was getting ready, and it goes with this. Number, it, listen to this. If you are asking God to increase your territory, he must first increase your faith. He must first increase your faith. If you're asking him to increase your territory, if you're asking him to increase your ministry, increase your influence, increase the things that he has, increase things in your life, he must first increase increase your faith. That may mean you're, you'll go through some things. That may mean that you'll go a few, uh, a f- uh, weeping may happen at night. That may happen. But if you're wanting an increase, expect an increase in faith as well. I don't know who it's for, but that one's free. Number three, see it through. See it through. Don't let the assignment die in the pause. Start on it. Do it with excellence. Do it how God told you and finish it. Finish it. Don't don't just stop. Don't just stop. This is too hard. What if what if Noah would have just stopped on the ark? Just, eh, this is kind of getting old. Kind of tired of building a big boat. I don't even like animals. What if he just stopped? We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. That's another big requ- request. That God has asked. There's this small college um, down uh, down south from here, um, and they have a uh, they have a football coach. His name is um, Nick Saban. I don't know if you've heard of him, but um, very small college. Uh, they've got a few wins. Um, Nick Saban. Um, anyway, uh, but he tells his players, roll tide. Uh, he tells his players, uh, we play a full sixty. We play a full sixty here. And that means that when the battle is hard, when, when the battle is hard, we keep fighting. When, when the victory is far away, we keep going. When we're tired, we'll still fight. When we're weary, we still get up and do it. It doesn't matter what comes our way. Can we resolve today that it doesn't matter what comes to us, what comes against us, we'll still do what God has called us to do. Can we resolve that today? If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Don't stop in the middle. Don't stop in the middle. It's an awful feeling knowing that you did not complete a task that God has asked you to complete. And number four, trust God. It's the only way that you can complete what He's asked you to do, is to trust God. He gave it to you. He'll see you through it. He's not a God that just says, Hey, Lacey, I need you to build a boat. 
have fun. You know, and check in on you like six years later. Hey, where's my boat? Right? Now, if he asks you to build a boat, God bless you. Right? Do you know how to build a boat? Do you know how to build a boat? No? Do you even know where to start to build a boat? I would love to tell you, but you know what? I don't know how to build a boat. I'm guessing you're probably going to need a tree if it's a wooden boat. Right? You're probably going to need a tree or two. I know where you can find some. There's tons of them where we live. Have at it. But don't ask me to help you. Do you know how to build a house? No? Can I let you in on a secret? I don't either. <laughs> so if God asked you to build a house, it'd be kind of hard. You're like, well, I know kind of what goes on, but I'm probably going to go ask James back there because do you know how to build a house? He knows how to build a house. Right? Thank God. <laughs> right? I told Kirsty when we got married, I was like, I'm not handy. Like, you know, something, something, uh, I, I'm, I'm not handy. If something, like, goes wrong in the house, I'm not handy. But I can hire someone that is. Now, I'll take care of all the computer stuff that we have. I'll network them. I, you will be able to go into your house and say, Alexa, turn on the lights. And they will turn on. And they do. Right? Our house is automated like nobody's business. Okay? But if we have a leak somewhere, I'm useless. Useless. Okay? So if God calls me to be a plumber, He's going to have to teach me how to be a plumber. If God calls me to build a house, He's first going to have to teach me how to build a house. And He will. He will. If God has called you to do something, He'll equip you for it. He's the God of the universe. The God that knows every single thing about you. How many hairs are on your head? He knows all there is to know about you. And He picked you. He picked you for a reason. Abraham had to go to the mountain. He still had to saddle the donkey. He still had to take his son on the trip. And it was only after three days that he knew where he was actually going. It's after three days that he looked up and said, yep, that's the mountain right there. God gave him a general direction. And he started going. It was after three days that he then was like, there it is. What if your GPS in your car? I said, Lacey, I've been picking on you, but I know you'll love me, right? If I said, Lacey, we're going to go to Kentucky, right? Do you know how to get to Kentucky? Neither do I. So we're going to use a GPS system. Lovely, right? What if it said, you know, Starting route to Kentucky, go north. And then that's the only thing you heard. Right? Go north. I'm going to need a little bit more. I'm going to need a little bit more. My GPS does say go west, and I'm like, I'm going to need a left or right. Because I didn't bring my compass with me. So I'm going to need like a left or right here. That's another app. The compass is another app. Go north. I think I have to turn that way. But that's a river over there. I don't think that's right. Right? I'm going to need a left or right here. But the thing is, is that if I said, hey, we're going to Kentucky, and your, and your GPS said, hey, go north, would you start going north? Or would you probably be looking for another app? You'd probably be looking for another app, right? I mean, who actually uses the GPS things now? It's all apps, yeah. right? You're like, hmm, we're going to need to go to Google Maps on this thing. Because obviously the go north thing, that was Siri. 
So we're going to have to go to Google. Okay? You'd probably be looking for another app. But the thing is, is that God said, hey, go towards Moriah. And it's going to be a, a range of mountains. And I'll tell you later which one I want you to go to. He knew the general direction that he needed to go to. But he didn't know till three days later what mountain it was. He looked up and he saw the mountain. He looked up and he saw the mountain. So the point is here, trust God. Trust God. When he says, hey Karen, you're going to be a teacher. Well, Lord, what am I going to teach? Lord, how am I going to teach it? Lord, what am I going to do? Trust him. He'll tell you. It may take him three days. It may take him longer. But it, it will happen. It will happen. Jerry, when the Lord says you're going to do this, don't doubt it. Trust that it's coming. It's, trust that it's coming. Just don't die in the pause. When God tells you to do it, start moving. When God tells you, you're going to do this, start moving in the direction. He saddled his donkey. He got up early that morning, saddled his donkey, and he left. He could have stayed there. He had already resolved in his mind, I'm going to sacrifice my child. That was hurdle number one. Hurdle number two was, I don't know where I'm going to do it. But he went ahead and headed in the direction. Don't, let, don't, don't stop in the pause. Don't stop in the pause from calling to fulfillment. When God says, you're going to do something, head in the direction. Trust God. Trust God. When you doubt the call... You are doubting the one who called. When you doubt the call, you're doubting the one who called. Abraham could have stopped. He could have said no. But God had an amazing plan. God had a ram in the bush. God had a ram in the bush. Stand with me all over the, world, all over the, the room. Did I say world? <laughs> Everybody in the world, Stand. I was thinking room, but somehow it came out world. I guess a lot of people are watching this right now. Will you commit to stepping up? Will you commit to saying, I refuse to die in the pause? There have been times in my life that God has asked me to do something. That God has told me, this is what you're going to do. And I died in the pause. I let it die in the pause. I saw that God did it. But I wasn't a part of it because I died in the pause. I let it stall. Commit to not letting it stall in the, in the pause. Commit to not letting fear take over. To not letting doubt take over to not letting the enemy have a hold on what God has called you to do. Attacks won't stop me. Fear can't control me. And doubt will not hinder me. Is that you today? Are you in a pause today? Are you in a pause today and you need to get going? Is that where you are? I'm going to pray. And after I pray, if that's you, I want to pray for you. So let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much that you love us so much to ask us to do things for you. Lord, thank you for looking at 7.7 .7 billion people. And we're the ones that can be your hands and feet. Now, Lord, don't let us die in the pause. Don't let us 
fizzle out. Let us keep going. Let us go in the direction that you have told us to go in. We'll give you all the praise and glory and honor. It's in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.